Hi, good afternoon. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Sorry, we're running a little bit late. Uh, I'm so honored to see many of you on a Friday afternoon. So really appreciate you guys are still here. Um, so let me quickly introduce myself. Uh, Lin Sang, I'm an Istio contributor. And I started working on Istio not so long ago, in August of this year. So I'm also working for IBM. Um, hi, my name is Mandar. Uh, I've been working on Istio since the project started. I work for Google. Um, and I'm really, really excited to be here. Uh, first, uh, a show of hands. I, I think there have been many Istio sessions uh, so far. So we, we, we just want to kind of get an idea of how many of you have attended one or more Istio sessions before. OK, great. Yeah, great. Yeah, because we want to use that information to help us. So uh, let's talk about common DevOps challenges, right? So what we're really trying to do with this session is to share with you guys some of the challenges we foresee and how Istio can actually help you solve those challenges. So we really try to connect the dots for you. Um, so the biggest uh, challenge number one, I feel, is how do I roll out a new version of my Microsoft service without any downtime? And how do I actually roll out a newer version of my microservice without impacting of my existing microservice, right? So I want to have the new version, like I've been telling Menda, book info. There was one thing I really don't like, book info, I, because the red star, um, as a Chinese, I have an issue with red, because red means I hate you. <laughs> and uh, so we recently did a new version of book info, and uh, we changed it to Istio Blue, and you saw both of us are wearing Istio Blue. So we want to change that to a different color with a different shape, with a hot shape. So how do you actually have a new version rolled out, but you can still continue having have your user working on the previous version, and you only not expose the new version to anybody else. So that's the biggest challenge number one. And the second challenge is, as the new version being rolled out to production or test or stage, how do I do A-B testing, right? So I was telling um, Madai, I wrote this newer version of Istio Blue Heart uh, for the review service of Book Info, but I don't want to roll out to everything every single one of you, you know, I just want to roll out to user myself, because I want to be the pilot testing and test it out, right? So this is actually not possible if you use Kubernetes by itself. You can't really roll out a newer version of your microservice, and without really testing the newer version, and not impacting your existing of anything. So that's uh, the second challenge we're trying to uh, solve. The third challenge we're trying to solve is canary testing. As you get comfortable with A-B testing, as I get comfortable with the new review version I wrote about the Istio Blue Hot, uh, I want to roll out to maybe a percentage of my user because, you know, I'm happy with it. And I want maybe 10% of my users start to testing it, right? So I want to make sure the 10% user can actually be happy and in the picture, uh, so that we can actually roll out to a much wider version of the, uh, wider um, percentage of the user. So these are the different challenges we feel like Istio can really step in to help. You could do it with Kubernetes with a percentage, but you have to be really, really uh, good at math, and actually you have to really watch your system really closely, because let's say, if I want to say 90% of my traffic goes to my existing version, and 10% of my traffic goes to my new version, then I have to really look at my Kubernetes deployments on the count on the replica sets to say, okay, I need to make sure my old version has a nine ratio to one ratio was my new version. So you have to count it very closely, but with the Istio, you don't really have to do that. So there's also some of the other challenges, right? What if some of your service goes down? Well, how do you actually inject foot into your application? to simulate that fault exists uh, in the test or staging environment before you even roll out to the production environment. 
What if your team member are writing your microservices in different language? That's the biggest thing people are advocating for microservices, right? People have their skills and language, and they could choose to write it in their preferred language. And how do you want to have uh, people actually read you everything in different language to do the retry and to do the inject fault, right? So that's a lot of work, and they are not implemented in a consistent way. Uh, the other thing is, how do we, our service, actually handle certain rate? So as the version 3, it's putting some of the load on the system. It's not actually impact the user behavior of the existing version. And also, uh, we, I heard this word observability. It's pretty hard to pronounce for me, but I hear it throughout the conference this week. It's like, how do you actually gain observability of your applications as it's deployed into your cluster? So uh, you guys already know Istio, so really quick, uh, this is a project launched by IBM, Google, and Lyft uh, since uh, May this year, not really so long ago. And uh, um, we really are trying to bring Istio to solve these uh, problems we were just mentioning early on, intelligent routing and load balancer, so user can quickly do A-B testing and be able to do canary testing before they actually change their uh, version to the particular version they like to. Uh, it, uh, produ uh, it helps you to do resilience testing across different language and platforms. So regardless whether uh, you are writing Java or Python or Ruby on Rails, we have the same Envoy sidecar inject for you and uh, control the traffic for you. Uh, you can also do policy uh, enforcement on the entire service mesh. In fact, uh, we're going to talk about rate limiting as an example of the policy enforcement uh, very soon. And then uh, telemetry and reporting observability. This is actually my favorite because I feel like this is the heart problem of DevOps, right? Without knowing exactly what's going on with the system, it doesn't matter really you know, how your system is doing because you have no visibility into that. Uh, components of Istio, since you guys already visit uh, Istio sessions, many of you are really quite trying to run this through quickly. Just so you guys know, a lot of this information is already available on istio.io, so feel free to visit there. Um, so the way I'm trying to think about Envoy is, um, actually we have a chart on Envoy, um, is, um, is the sidecar that we use um, in Istio to inject uh, into every single of the microservices. And the reason we pick Envoy is it's really battle test at Lyft. Uh, it has, um, Lyft has 100 plus services. It has like 10,000 10, VMs really being tested really well with uh, two million requests per second. So uh, on the right side, you can see what Envoy already uh, provides and also what Istio actually, as part of the Istio work, uh, how the Istio team actually contribute um, to Envoy at the bottom of the right side. So getting down to the architecture of Istio, uh, as the traffic coming through the internet, as you visit your microservices that's deployed into the mesh, you can see the traffic goes to the Istio ingress, which is the um, the Envoy sidecar, I guess it's on the left side. And then as that's going on, it's going to hit um, onto your microservices. In fact, uh, I try to think of Envoy as a dummy router without pilot because really Envoy doesn't know how to route your traffic without talking to pilot. That's why this picture always having uh, Envoy connected to pilot. And it always asks a pilot, hey, what's, um, how do I route to the next uh, endpoint, what is the services uh, endpoint, and which uh, part should I reach out to? And then also, uh, the sidecar also talk to Mixer as far as telemetry and policy enforcement. So they always ask Mixer, is it okay, does it match the policy, and also forward the 
uh, metrics and monitoring information through Mixer. Istio OS uh, took me by surprise recently as I took through Istio OS. Um, by the way, we rena rename it to Istio security, security now. Um, it, when I put Istio OS and every security and every single component into web scope, I actually find out uh, Istio security doesn't talk to any of the other Istio components. So that took me by surprise. And I find out the, the main reason is Istio security mainly talk to the Kubernetes API to make sure the service account, the certificates are generated properly and mounted properly. Uh, traffic control. So traffic control really help us to uh, solve our challenge in number one. So we talk about how do we roll out a new version without downtime or changing any of my existing code, right? So this example gives you a simple route rule where you can specify, I want, in my production environment, I want 100% traffic goes to this particular version. So really simple, you don't have to change any of your application code, you can just apply this uh, route rule using kubectl or istio cuddle and then boom, it would impact, uh, it would be taking um, effect immediately on your system. Uh, traffic steering, as an example here, we were talking about how do I do A-B testing, right? I wrote up this new version of the review system. I just want to test it to myself or maybe to my iPhone or maybe to all the iPhone users. So traffic steering is typically based on the request header or cookies uh, to roll out to a specific uh, set of user first. And then traffic splitting, uh, as you can see, this is another route rule we have uh, where we want to say, okay, we want to route 90% of the rule to production, continue, and the because the new thing, we already did A-B testing, let's go ahead and route 10% of the new thing, uh, which is alpha, but let's go ahead and route 10% and do some canary testing on that. Uh, resilience is another thing, uh, is to add out of the box uh, to your microservices. So you can add uh, fault tolerance to your application. And what's really nice is you don't have to change your application code. So what you do is you can uh, config this um, configuration to specify, you know, what is your destination and uh, how do you want to config your circuit breaker for the example here, like maximum connection is 100 and uh, the HTTP max request is uh, uh, 1,000 and it's trying to say, you know, for every single, um, Every single five minutes, uh, it's going to check um, the host. Uh, it's going to check the HTTP endpoint to see if it's still live, and if it actually has an error for seven times consecutively, it's going to uh, put it onto sleep and give an error code back for 15 minutes. So this is really effective uh, when you need to inject a fault into your system. You can easily uh, try it out, see how your system react to the forts. Um, as you guys probably heard, um, having the right configuration into microservices is extremely important. So some of the services might have a different timeout than the other services. So out of the box, it still supports uh, timeout configuration where you can say, you know, the timeout is um, 100 milliseconds, and you can also config, uh, config how many times you want to retry. Like in our example here, you can config retry as uh, three times, uh, three retries. So that essentially means after 300 milliseconds, it's just going to reach the timeout, and it can return a specific error code that you actually pre-specify in the configuration. So we support HTTP and gRPC out of the box, uh, error code out of the box, you can also uh, inject uh, um, some of the delay into your system this way. Uh, with that, I'm going to pass on to Mada to talk about rate limiting. Oh, yeah. Hi. Uh, yeah, so uh, rate limiting is just kind of an, another one of those things that you need in a, in a microservices environment. Uh, specifically, just even within a mesh, you sometimes need to protect 
a production service from like a rogue or a bad deployment. So something is deployed and it suddenly starts DDoSing kind of your uh, own service. So you definitely don't want that even in a, in a, in a canary situation. And then the normal API management rate limits uh, are, are of course uh, kind of well-known, th those use cases. So this is, uh, this is just an example of uh, how rate limit is configured. Uh, I won't go into the details of, of the format because uh, actually we will see, oh, there is a demo at the end. So we'll see it, some of it uh, at demo. But essentially we uh, will provide configurable limits and overrides uh, is to provide multiple quota or rate limiting backends. So uh, there is one that ships with Istio, and you can always use an external kind of a enterprise grade late rate limiter uh, if you so choose. <clears throat> and then telemetry, we, we have spoken a few times, but uh, we have to make sure that we collect metrics in a, in, in a very systematic way. And uh, Istio defines a standard set of metrics, which are what you would expect, right? So the mesh is monitoring every link and every link has kind of a set of what you would call like obvious or reasonable metrics. So you want to know the error rates, you want to know the, the request rates, the latencies, and then you also want to label them by what service is calling what other service and uh, also service versions. So at, at present kind of that's the set of our standard metrics. We, we let you look at uh, traffic by uh, like th these different metrics, and they're dimensioned by these kind of four or, or five parameters. So <clears throat> we, we've kind of taken you through uh, several features that Istio provides, and uh, you've also attended other talks, right? In, in order to use it uh, to do a reliable application rollout, right, uh, you can actually use many of these primitives and kind of fit them together. So here is an example of like how you could do that. And, and this, is, uh, this is just a proposal, kind of we would li like your comments uh, on it, but it's also, also an example of how you can stitch things together that all the primitives that Istio provides and make it do kind of a higher level task. <laughs> so, so here uh, we, we show that there is a, an Istio deployment controller, right, which is similar to the Kubernetes deployment controller. Um, it is spawning its own replica sets and attaching horizontal pod scalers to those replica sets. So now, as those get more traffic, they will be automatically scaled. That's, that's kind of done by the autoscaler itself. The key piece, one of the key pieces that Istio is adding here is being able to smoothly change the traffic percentages. So you can dial up from 1%, 5%, 10%, and then you can let the horizontal pod autoscaler actually take care of scaling the instances um, up or down. <clears throat> so that's kind of architecturally separate as like a traffic split controller, if you, uh, if you will. As I mentioned before, uh, we collect a standard set of metrics, which means as this, as this process is going on, uh, you can watch those metrics, you can watch error rates that are both to and from whichever service you're, you're trying to deploy the new version of. And then you can make decisions regarding whether to proceed, pause, or roll back, right? So those are, those are the three signals that are kind of available that the traffic split controller will act on. If everything is going well, at every step we'll say, okay, proceed, and then it will gradually go to 100%, at which point, uh, we can retire the old replica. And then, now, th this is kind, kind of a simple use case, but one of the things with, with Istio is that we, we want to make it composable and we want other people to like use it and do other great things with it, right? Which means if you can actually use an external canary analyzer, which doesn't just look at the basic metrics, but it could be looking at lots of other things that kind of we don't have any visibility into. But it can provide those same signals saying, okay, whether to proceed, pause, or, or roll back. Um, and then this kind of forms a, a useful and extensible 
mechanism to do a reliable uh, application rollout. Uh, Istio being composable, it doesn't have to be implemented this way. You, you could actually implement this whole thing as, as CI CD, and actually there were, there were several talks which used CI CD, like basically attached some of these pieces to, to CI CD and uh, achieved a, a similar goal. Uh, so from the perspective of like external canary analyzer, uh, you, yeah, so. Yeah, this is a project I showed around this week. Um, so it's a, actually a research project by the IBM research team. So essentially, I've been complaining to them I, I, how much I love about Zipkin, right? Distribute tracing, but I don't want to be a machine and look at each single request through Zipkin. That's just too boring. So they come up with this project that allow you to analyze a period of aggregated trace uh, through a configurable time and actually analyze for you, you know, what's exactly going on, so you don't have to analyze the 100 traces yourself. Uh, they can also do the base uh, deployment and canary deployment comparison and give you a visualization of, you know, is there any time uh, impact throughout your canary deployment. Right, and, and, and then kind of tying it back, back to the previous slide, this can also provide that signal. It, looking at lots of other things, it can say proceed or stop. So. Last step, demo with uh, kind of all, all standard disclaimers and prayer to the demo gods and, and, and all that. And, and remember, if, if it doesn't work, uh, it's actually live. So let me start it. Okay, so um, that's the book info app. Huh. Outside. Okay. Oh. Uh. Okay. So sorry about that. Uh, I I don't know I don't know what is being shown. Oh. Okay. Oh, it's down there. Maybe you can pick mirror display. I think that's the easiest way. Okay. <laughs> Do you want me to try that? Yeah. So I can I can just talk while yeah okay. So um, the book info app you you've you've seen it before I I think uh, what we are going to do uh, in and uh, Lynn set it up before was that there is a review service in the middle and we are going to we are going to deploy a new version of the review service and kind of show you some of these uh, pieces at work. Okay, thank you very much. All right, so um, that's the reviews v3 service. It's whatever, the red stars, and now we want it to, uh, so right now it's deployed as normal, which means that it's going to round robin between the, the, the various uh, different backends, and, and you'll see that it, so this is what we want to deploy, the, the blue stars, and then the other two versions are, are there. This is just to show that we deployed the, the third version. Yeah, this is the default uh, Kubernetes behavior. Unfortunately, you don't have a lot of control, so if you have multiple version deployed, it's just going to be round robin. Right, okay, so now what we will do is we will create a route rule uh, which will only uh, which will send all the traffic for reviews to version v2, which means that we should stop seeing the uh, we should stop seeing all the other stars, and we should only see the the black stars. So, if everything works right, we should see the black stars. And now we're seeing the black star. So this is kind of this is the the setup. So so now we have our v2 and we have recently deployed v3, but it's not it's not visible yet, right? Now, what I will do is I will create a um, a test rule, a test rule 
would be for A-B testing, and you see that we, well, uh, we use the word JSON uh, as the, um, as the tester here, so. You should just change that to Len. <laughs> okay. Um, so, and I'm creating this rule, and what this rule is doing is if the logged in user is JSON, only that user is gonna go to uh, the version three of the application. Uh, typically, you wouldn't do it for one user, you would do it for a group, or something like, like a test group or something like that. Oh, make it bigger, oops. Is that, can you see it now? Okay, thank you. Okay, um, so now, if I log in as JSON, I should see the um, these stars, right? So, sorry, I should see, see the hearts. Um, so you you test with that, and 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 now I'll, I'll I'll kind of show you. I'll put some actual load on it. Okay, so I'm going to put some uh, load on it now, and that load is going to be from that user JSON. So what should happen is we should see a lot of traffic just going to version three of the application, right? Oh, it's even bigger, okay. Okay, um, and here is the Grafana dashboard. So now, okay, so now I've just put some load on it. Um, this is the rating service. I'll I'll let it load for for a little bit, but yeah, as as you can see, this traffic is all uh, V3, right? So which, which means that only V3 is getting traffic, and ratings V3 calls ratings. So we're seeing all the traffic here and no traffic from the other side. That that was just manual traffic. Now once this this kind of goes on for a little bit, and, and you're you're sure about uh, yeah your your application works or seems to work. Uh, what we will do is we will update the the previous rule, and we will actually start like normal canary, right? So now it's a 90, 90 10 split, but it's for all traffic. So I'm going to do that by. Okay, so now we replace that rule, and now 90% should go to V2, and 10% should go to V1. And we should see that over here. So, so product page, uh, as you can see, it's all going to V3 here, and now I'm going to load it one more time, uh, this time without the, okay, uh, this time without the cookie, and that should let it just uh, kind of rip and go to both these places. Okay, so so now very very soon we should see both of these these light up. And here is where I'm going to introduce the the rate the rate limiting part, right? So now consider a scenario where this new new service that Lynn just updated uh, has like some tight loop, right? Has has some like crazy tight loop that puts a lot of load on the rating service. So even, even though you're, you're canarying, uh, V2 is the, is the primary version that, uh, that is being used, but you don't want to affect the rating service just because there is some problem with the version V3. So, and as you can see, there is, Yeah, so uh, as you can see, even, even though now traffic is evenly split, the amount of traffic that ratings is receiving from reviews is completely skewed because there is a tight loop, apparently, in the, in the code that you wrote. Uh, yeah, uh, bad code, right? Okay, so, so, now, so now what 
we have to do is we, we have to make sure that we don't, uh, we, we have to make sure that that does not happen. And, and, and the way to do that is to configure this rate limit rule, which is, which is what, what uh, I showed you earlier. So what the, rate, what the rate limit rule says is that if its source version is V3 of the service, only allow 10 requests per second. And during, when the deployment is going on, uh, it will make sure that you're protecting your backend services as things are rolling forward. So we are going to create that rule by F and here's the rate limit rule. So now I can actually look at that rule. So now uh, here is the quota rule, which was the, the rate limit rule uh, that was just created. So now, if I load the, the system again, I'm going to load it for a little bit more time now. Okay, so now if I load the system again, I should see that the, the ratings uh, service will never get traffic more than uh, 10 requests per second. And I'm actually going to do it with the, with the cookie just to kind of bring the point forward. Okay, so now we have to let it rip for a little bit and we should see uh, some traffic flowing by. That's great, so I wrote that code but I'm not supposed to impact production for version two, right? Right. Thank you. Right, so now, as you can see, V3 to V1 is receiving all these 429s. And 429s means it's being rate limited. So all the traffic is being sent back from the proxy. It never actually reaches the service. And if you're, so which means your actual service won't be impacted and all your production traffic can continue going through. So again, this is, this is just one of the features, an, an important feature, but, but one of the features that Istio provides. And you can stitch together a very compelling uh, application rollout with the primitives uh, that Istio offers. So, so yeah, so now, now uh, you, can, you can see here that this, uh, that this blue line is, actually, sorry, yeah. Uh, you can see here that the actual traffic that's allowed to flow through is just 10, 10 requests per second. So uh, that's it, that's the demo. That's Mostly amazing, worked. <laughs> yeah. So you can write bad code, but it still really help you to have policy enforcement, traffic management, so you have full control on exactly what's been deployed into your production. You can rate limiting. So you might wrote bad code, but thank you for protecting me. I know our right. system. Yep. Yeah, so we have uh, one minute left. Maybe you have time for one or two questions, but we'll be here if you guys have further questions. Any questions? Yeah. So, uh, what are the, uh, okay, uh, so I'm just, my question is one actually, this work with only HTTP traffic or can I route the policy with any other traffic like TCP or UDP? So, we, we also support TCP. Okay. Uh, and, and there is, so, um, TCP has uh, less number of attributes than okay. HTTP because, well, HTTP has headers and you can write policies on headers. But yes, we, we also support TCP. You'll, you'll also see TCP metrics. In fact, uh, if you just scroll through, yeah, so there are no TCP services right now, so no TCP metrics. But if we had TCP services in the mesh, we would have seen uh, TCP metrics as well. And then you can also write policies on the same. Okay, I uh, have one more question. So if my application is like an uh, uh, MQ consumer or producer, so it, it won't actually accept the TCP traffic or any uh, HTTP traffic. So it's basically just a pub sub. So what are the best practice actually to roll out those kind of apps? I'm actually 
troubles. Uh, I'm having trouble hearing you. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, I couldn't, couldn't get the question. Thank you guys. Okay, really appreciate uh, you, thank guys you guys. Got handy. Thanks for attending.